do you know what food our bodies are made for? Hello, my name is Inga and today we're going to be discussing just that topic and hopefully by the end of it you will know for sure what food our bodies are naturally made for. So yeah, so this topic is such an important one and me and my husband Mark, we went on a quest to find out the right food or the right fuel as I call it for our bodies. Um, we went and did quite a few different diets. We kind of eaten more raw. We never were fully raw, but we kind of went more raw foods. Then we went organic foods. Then we tried paleo uh, diet for a year. If you're curious how that went, I'll link above and down below to the to the video where I discuss this. But but basically, um, it didn't work out any better than the standard diet we were on because my husband has a low thyroid condition so we're trying to find the right food that could help to reverse um or at least to clear out some symptoms so basically help him and then we came across to a plant-based diet and the rest is history right however you know we the way we came to the conclusion that this is the right way to eat was due to looking at our anatomy in physiology, right? So I linked down below um, the, the table you can download. So I recommend if you can stop the video, um, download and either print it out or have it in front of you so you can refer to it because we'll be going down this table and looking at the comparative um, anatomy of the five different um, mammals, right? So um, it's probably looking the other way around for you when I showed it. So basically we're comparing the anatomy of um, carnivores, which is your cats, um, you know, big cats and small cats. So cats are like the true carnivores omnivores like your bears, your dogs, that sort of thing. Um, herbivores, so all your grass eaters, you know, so um, cows, sheep, that sort of thing. Frugivores, which is your monkey, and then human bodies, right? So this is the five mammalian anatomy throughout. So all the systems are laid out system by system and comparatively, so we can compare which ones our systems are most like and you know just a spoiler alert our systems as you will see will go through some of them i'll not list you know go through all of them because you can see for yourself but we'll touch on a few main ones that i think are most kind of um well makes you understand what we're supposed to be eating from comparing those specific systems, like the ma major main ones um, or the most interesting ones as well. But our system is the most likely, like the frugivore, right? Like our monkeys. Um, so yeah, that's pro our system is almost identical to theirs, right? So it's a little bit of a spoiler alert. So if you look at this um, chart, um, we can we can start from vision, right? Um, so vision, for example, um, carnivores and omnivores, they don't see in full spectrum color. Um, for carnivores in particular, they are more geared towards movement because they need to catch moving prey, right? So that's why they're very sensitive to movement, but they don't see all the colors. The reason why, for example, herbivores, frugivores, and humans we see in full color because we the different colors signify different nutrients for us and some plants have different colors to warn you you know or to say what kind of nutrients they have so we need to look at things and we need you know how they say eat the rainbow that's really good advice you don't need necessarily to have all the colors um at you know on one plate at any given point but make you know um concerted effort to eat different colored fruits and 
foods, foods in general, uh, plant foods through the week so that you get all sorts of nutrients throughout the week, um, you know, to get different um, kind of minerals and, and vitamins. And that's why we see in full spectrum color, just so that we can differentiate, you know, between different vegetables, different fruits, um, and, you know, kind of choose different colors to eat as well. Our circadian rhythm. So that's an interesting one. I've spoken on this channel about our circadian rhythms and how that kind of influences when we should really eat and when we shouldn't, when it, you know, kind of digestion and elimination phases and different things like that. So I'll link above and down below for you, um, you know, the videos where you can refer to that. Um, but circadian rhythms, if you look, it's such a massive difference between carnivores, omnivores, and the rest of the three herbivores, frugivores, and humans. So um, the carnivores and omnivores sleep 18 to 20 hours um, per 24 hour cycle. So for most of that time, they're asleep and they only get up to hunt, get food, and for the rest, they're just resting and not expending the energy, right? Um, whereas for herbivores, frugivores and humans is the other way around. We're only sleeping eight and we're active for the rest of the 24 hour cycle so that we can go gather, prepare and eat the, the you know, the other types of foods, right? Jaw motion and mastication, that's a really good one for me. Um, I kind of like demonstrating it like that. So um, carnivores and, and um, omnivores jaws kind of work like just up and down in this kind of tear the flesh uh, motion. So they just kind of chomp it and tear it and swallow it. Whereas all the rest of ours, you know, herbivore, frugivore and humans, we have a lateral kind of movement so that we can grind the food between teeth. So there's movement like that. Whereas carnivores, they just have this kind of movement. So that's completely different again. Right, teeth. So that's an interesting one, right? So you'll say, well, what about our canines, right? We've got these canines, mine are just not even big at all. You can hardly see, but some other people's are a little bit more pro pro um, pronounced canines. You can see them more clearly. You know, and they say, well, that is, you know, that makes you know, makes us kind of carnivores, really, or at least omnivores, because, you know, these are obviously to, to kind of um, tear the meat and things like that. Well, <laughs> I would challenge anybody who says that to you, um, or even yourself, if you don't believe it, I challenge you to run after a um, running zebra or a cow or whatever, or a, or a horse, and, you know, claw, claw it with your claws and chomp with your canine teeth and rip a piece of flesh with those canines, if you will. And that just, you know, is really funny when you, you say it like that. It just looks cartoonish if you even imagine it, because it is. Our canines are made to eat harder vegetables, you know, crunch on a carrot or on an apple, things like that. So just kind of help you bite into th harder things to chew. Um, they're not made for tearing flesh. And, you know, if you look at our claws, I know we're kind of going a little bit further down there. But, you know, even our nails they're not claws. They, we can't, you know, jump onto any, you know, moving animal or whatever and try and catch anything with our bare hands, right? Um, they're just not made for that, right? They're just made for us, you know, they're very dexterous. We we have the dex dexterity, is there a, even a word? Dexterity, that's the word. Dexterity to pick up little things and, you know, and eat plant foods. That's what, you know, our hands are made for gathering things, making things. Okay. So let's see what else is there next. Right. So our salivary chemistry as well. So we're still in the mouth, let's see. And even our saliva differs. So for example, 
carnivores and omnivores, they have acidic saliva. It starts breaking down the meat as, you know, it is already in the, in the, um, in the mouth. Whereas um, herbivores, frugivores and humans, the saliva is actually alkaline, so completely different. Then if we're talking about acidity, let's talk about stomach acidity. If you look there, stomach acidity um, for carnivores and omnivores, their stomach acidity is very acidic. It's less than one pH. The lesser the number, the more acidic they are. So it's less than one pH, right? Whereas if you look at, you know, herbivore, frugivore and humans, um, the pH is four to five. So much more alkaline, right? So it's less acidic. That's that's the whole reason why, for example, it takes us so much longer to digest meat or animal products than it does um, plant matter. So, for example, plant dishes or plant food that you eat digest in about two, three hours. OK, maybe up to four hours. But if you eat meat or animal products in general, that can take up to eight hours to digest. So it takes so much longer because, you know, our stomach acidity is not designed for that uh, type of food. It's designed for plant foods and not animal foods. Okay, so that's the, the big, big difference there. Um, right, this one is very, very interesting as well. The length of small intestine, right? So that's where all the kind of, um, in our body, a lot of assimilation of nutrients and things happens in the small intestine because it goes from the stomach into the small intestine. It goes on and on and on. And then it goes into like a large intestine and, and out, right? So for carnivores and omnivores, their length of small intestine is one and a half to three times their body length um, as compared to say frugivores and humans it's nine times so our intestinal tract is so much longer because you know it's set up differently okay so we are so much closer to um, um, frugivores than the meat eaters or carnivores because like i said there the length of intestinal tract is only one and a half to three times the body length right so the reason why their intestinal tract is much shorter is because meat if it is stayed in intestinal tract for too long it starts putrefying gases start being produced and things like that so that's why their system is quite quick so it goes in strong stomach acid picks it apart and it just goes straight out so you know that's the whole reason why carnivores and, and uh, omnivores digestive system and intestinal tract is so much shorter so you know the meat can go quickly through the system whereas ours plant matter needs more time to break down and release the nutrients and all the vitamins and minerals and things and you know extract from that plant matter from that fiber okay so that's why our intestinal tract is much longer um, actually herbivores in this respect have like the longest um the intestinal tract because there is 20 times their body length how incredible is that? So double the amount of humans, you know, the herbivores, because obviously they eat a lot of roughage plant matter, you know, like um, grass and, and leaves and sticks. So it, it, you know, goes on much, much longer to, to break down properly. Um, and it makes sense, right? When you think about it. Cholesterol, I find that one really, really interesting, right? So if you look at the cholesterol line towards the bottom there, um, carnivores and omnivores can metabolize large amounts of cholesterol efficiently, all right? Whereas if you look um, at the herbivores, frugivores and humans, the herbivores, frugivores and humans can only metabolize phytosterols efficiently so phytosterols is a uh, plant-based fat so you know your avocados your nuts and seeds 
um, your um, olives, things like that. So natural fats in in plant foods called phytosterols, right? So we can um, process these effectively, but we can't animal cholesterol. And, and that's, it makes sense, right? You'll not see a lion or a domestic cat with arthrosclerosis, right? Um, from eating meat because they don't have such a problem. They can eliminate and process cholesterol effectively. Their bodies are designed for that, right? And it makes sense. That's why we have clogged arteries and things like that. If we consume a lot of animal foods, especially fatty animal foods, because our bodies are not designed to process or eliminate them effectively, right? So that makes so much sense. Yeah, and we already talked about nails and claws and things like that. So yeah, so just a few, a few systems I touched on. Um, you can go through all of them, but pretty much you will see that like for like, our systems are more like frugivores and herbivores than they are like carnivores and omnivores. In fact, it's like day and night, completely different. Um, and it makes sense you know, why our bodies are designed for plant foods. It's just the whole thing in anatomy. It's not about, you know, kind of going by principles, beliefs and loving animals, although I do. You know, I, I love that my health choice, my physiology also um, means that it's great for animals because I'm not eating them, I'm not killing them and it's great for the planet too. So it's a win-win-win situation for everybody involved. So I'm, I'm glad to know that but it's good to know for me regardless that it's not due to beliefs or kind of religion or you know kind of kindness to animals or anything like that. If anything it's just based on fact in and our physiology. So yeah, so for those of you that are, you know, not sure, you want to know the truth, you know, you want to know the facts, um, definitely, you know, download this, study it, and you will see for yourself that the clue is in front of you. It's our physiology. The facts are staring right you in the face. You know, you maybe never explored, you never maybe went down, um, to look into all of that, but it's just all there for you to see and it's undeniable. <laughs> so then you understand what is the right type of fuel for your body by looking at other, you know, mammals like the herb, the herbivore and the frugivore, what kind of foods they're eating. That's the kind of foods we should be eating, plant-based foods. Um, yeah simple. I hope that was helpful guys. If you have any questions, um, put them down below. I'll be happy to help and answer if I can. Um, but yeah, I hope that kind of illuminated um, some of the kind of dark places or question marks that you've been having, not understanding paleo, this, that, different kind of diets, not knowing which one is the right one for you. Um, just look at the facts and look at your physiology and just follow that. Um, that's all you need to do, guys. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Give me a thumbs up. If you're new, welcome and subscribe to my channel for more tips like this and healthy whole food plant-based recipes. And until next time, remember, food is fuel. So be mindful of what you put in your body. Until next time, guys. Thank you.